Welcome to Looking Forward Philadelphia. This is Jeff Abramowitz here on Philly Cam 106.5 FM, and we are so glad to be here for this special edition. And I'll introduce you to my cohort in crime, Nate Salar. Nate, how you hey, doing? Hey, I'm great, Jeff. How's everybody doing? It's good to be here. Good to have this uh, conversation going on. I'm looking forward to it. Let's go. <laughs> uh, well, we started off good because we got that Eagles banner behind you. So oh, yeah. we'll take a victory. We like that. We're really excited about today's show. And today is so for, for those of you that don't know, Looking Forward Philadelphia is a show that's been on uh, Philly Cam for the last uh, year and a half, almost two years, a little over two years, I guess. And it talks about criminal justice reform and prison reentry issues. We really dig down and ask the hard questions of how can we make things better? How can we change things that are happening in our Philadelphia community and Pennsylvania community? And look at um, the success stories as well as the failures of where men and women are coming home, how they can help turns how we can help transition them into um, into better uh, into career opportunities and the whole nine yards. So it's really been a fun journey. Um, Nate's been along uh, the journey with me and we're excited to have yeah. um, to have Nate here today. So Nate, first, how are you doing? I'm doing excellent, man. You know, with everything going on and considering how things are going, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So, Nate, you should know. Um, first, you should know that I uh, am an executive director at Jeb's Human Services in Philadelphia, and Nate uh, works for our Looking Forward Reentry Program, uh, which is located at fifteen twenty six Cecil B. Moore. And Nate was previously with. Uh, well, you tell him, Nate, where'd you work before that? Yeah, well, I I worked before the Mayor's Office of Reintegration Services, known as uh, Rise, um, another reentry program, helping out with um um inmates or uh, people coming out of prison and trying to get early releases and get them acclimated back into society with em employment, education, and certifications. Um, ran into Jeff. Jeff had a program going on that um, I thought was had potential, and I, it does. So I stepped over with Jeff, and he really said all that to tell me that he's my boss and I need to watch myself on this show. <laughs> <laughs> that's so not true. That's so not true, but that's okay. Nate and I have a good time with the show, and yes. part of the show is really having um, some hard discussions. So th some things you should know. First of all, the broadcast today is not only on radio, on WPPM 106.5 uh, LPFM in Philadelphia, but it's also being um, a live broadcast on Comcast Channel 66 and 966 and Verizon uh, stations 29 and 30, and it's on Facebook Live, and we'll be getting and blasting it out again later on today. So we're here really to talk about one thing, and that's the upcoming election. Uh, we have we, we've gone through as a society so many challenges over the past year. Uh, and, and so many times we think to ourselves, you know, what can we do? Um, how can we do something to change uh, the world that we live in? And right. the simplest thing in our democracy is really to get out and vote. It's the one thing that can really make a difference. And unfortunately, too many people in our country um, don't do it, right. um, are fearful, maybe have never voted before. And, and we need to remind people that, it's time. It's time for you to get up and have your voices heard. Um, we have an amazing show for you today. We have our state senator, um, Senator Sharif Street's going to be on today talking to us. We have an unbelievable artist, Maxie Mandel, is going to be on. She's going to be sharing her song, uh, two songs with us today, uh, one that originated from um, George Floyd and the tragedy that, that happened to George Floyd. We're also um, hopefully going to be blessed with uh, our Attorney General Josh Shapiro is going to be on later in the show. We're excited about having him on, and he's been receiving a lot of national attention regarding the work he's doing here in Pennsylvania, making sure every vote counts and that people come out. And they may have one or other two, one or two other surprises for you along the way. Jeff. So we're here. And um, I'm glad to be here with Nate. Nate and I have both. Um, we've been on the journey. Yes. And I'll tell you, Nate, when I, I came home five years ago, last uh, two weeks ago, and one of the first things that happened when I came home was the realization that I could vote. And right. it was amazing because I hadn't um, when you, I was down five years, but coming back and just getting back into that that voting booth did something that that energized me so much to just to say, I have a say, I, I can do something. And it was part of what moved me forward to continue doing re-entry re, uh, re work and work with men and women that are um, coming home or that have challenges. So right. um, I love the work that we do. I, I just, I'm so excited. I'm just popping out of my seat right now, but I want to get right to our first guest because he was gracious enough to give us some time today. And I'd like to bring on our uh, wonderful state Senator Sharif Street. Senator Street, how are you? I'm well, how are you? 
I am. I am really. Uh, thank you so much for coming on today. So I should tell you a little bit about Senator Street. That more than um, you probably know more than I could possibly do in a in a short time that we have today. But you know, grew up in North Philadelphia. Grew up um, knows the streets of, of Philadelphia better than just about anybody. Um, he was a young lawyer in Philadelphia and saw the the cruelty of and injustices in our criminal justice system. And uh, like many people, um, you know, dedicated his life to politics and to making to actually seeing change happen and making it happen. Um, he graduated Morehouse College in Atlanta, uh, cum laude. And um, I have to tell you, I. When I came home, one of the first people that I actually encountered at an event was um, Senator Street. And he, um, he shook my hand, patted me on the back and said, you know, um, do what you need to do. And, and I did. And he was been a guiding force for me and a mentor coming home. So thank you, Senator, for, for coming on today. We appreciate you so much. Thanks. Well, look, uh, thank you for uh, having me. It's good, it's good to be here. And I appreciate that you're able to provide a voice for folks and uh, an outlet to get information out to people. Awesome. So we're going to talk the election because the election is a hot thing and it's a it's a, a topic right now that is on the forefront of everyone's mind, especially men and women that are in our communities that are black and brown. Uh, we're currently in Philadelphia facing tremendous amount of gun violence, community unrest, uh, people out of jobs, and the obvious uh, impact of COVID-19. And I guess I want to start with you. And the first question for you is, you know, why? Why vote? Why is this election different than others? Why is it so important that um, we get out to vote? Well, look, I mean, there's so many issues that are affecting um, uh, so, uh, all of us. I mean, the, the gun violence that takes place doesn't take place in a vacuum. People in Pennsylvania can go out and buy um, military grade firearms. Um, all you have to do is be over 21. Uh, you can go to a, uh, a sporting goods store and fill up your trunk full of them, um, and then those and then there and then those weapons get resold uh, sometimes, often illegally in neighborhoods, and they create and you let people spray with guns. That's why we've got kids, children in the suburbs doing active shooter drills. Children in the city um, taking t teddy bears and arranging them for uh, memorial services for people that they that they know that have been killed. This is not normal behavior. The uh, federal government failed to reauthorize the weapon ban. Pennsylvania has some of the most lax gun laws of any state in the country. And it doesn't matter whether we have columbines or uh, how many mass shootings we have. It doesn't matter how many innocent children get gunned down in cities like Philadelphia, but also like Reading and, and Allentown and, and other places, you know, Erie, Pittsburgh. Um, there seems to be more of a concern about what the gun lobby wants than what people want. Voting can change that. We can put people in place that will vote in place responsible gun laws. I have some, um, and other Senate Democrats uh, have, uh, and House Democrats have laws in the state legislature that would do it. But we need to. We need more legislative uh, colleagues. We talk about the health disparities that exist. Hahnemann Hospital closed. Um, uh, New Philadelphia health systems when they closed. The reality is that we haven't invested enough in in certain in, in uh, health and health systems, and their, the health disparities are great. Um, we have, that can be changed by voting more people into office. And if uh, and we look at the we look at issues like um, basic civil rights. Trump is about he has appointed over two hundred judges, many of which that don't respect a woman's right to choose. They don't respect. The, the voting rights provisions that affect, that impact people of color don't they don't they they are willing to allow him to continue to hold uh, immigrant children in cages. They uh, don't want to respect the rights of the LGBTQ plus community. There are so many people. There's so many different things that are on the stake. Our environment. You know, you, the United States used to be a leader. In the vote and in, in, in environmental justice, we were a leader in saving the planet. If we pulled out the Paris Accord, we're not even we're not even on the, on the grid. So right. there's so many things that are important. I watch all these young people that are protesting, and they and, and I and I love the energy, and I love the passion, and I love the enthusiasm. And I love the fact that they are willing to fight for stand up for what they believe in. But they need to understand that marching is good, protesting is good. Picketing is good. 
civil unrest, if peaceful and nonviolent, is good and it's okay. Right. It's disruptive, but a part of that must include voting, and we must vote people who respect our values. And guess what? I don't think the current president does. There's no way that he would he invoke the Proud Boys. Senator, I mean, one of the things that that strikes me is that you know we have so many men and women in our black and brown communities have been disenfranchised when it talks about voting and and having a voice. And um, what would you say to people that would encourage them um, to get out and and to make their voices heard at this time more than any other time in our history? So what I would say is if if you want a justice department that's going to address um, the basic issues that you care about. At the federal level, we need to vote in a president and a Congress that respects our values and our rights. If we want to make sure that we get the proper funding for homelessness and you care about housing insecurity, we need to vote in a state legislature, a president and a Congress that respects our values. If you care about um, justice for who you and you believe that no matter who you love, or what color of your skin you are, or how you worship, or or whether you were born here or abroad, or whether you're a poor white person that lives in an area where you don't got a lot of money, and you think your rap, your values and your rights should be respected just as much as anybody else. We need to elect an attorney, a state attorney general, and a president that will appoint a U.S. attorney general mm -hmm. to our voting rights. All these things are on the ballot. Politics can change them, and your activism is only one part of it. Elections are the other part. And then after the elections, we have to continue to be engaged, continue to monitor, and continue to, to stay in it. Elections aren't the whole game, but they're definitely an essential part of it. So can I go ahead, Nate? All right. I wanted to say this. Um, a, lot of, a lot of what's going on is that um, a lot of um, black and brown people aren't educated on the fact that voting for just the president and the mayor aren't the only important elections. Right. Some, of, some of them don't stay stay involved enough to vote on the Senate and the Congress. And that's where we need to actually be. I think that some um, some education on how to vote and how to stay involved, engaged in the voting system will help as well. Because most people just feel like we're voting for the president and vote for the mayor or, you know, things of that nature. And those aren't the people that make all this. They don't determine the decision to be made. And I think that to, to have a knowledge of those things would better equip people or, or better get them to be engaged in wanting to vote. Because I, I, just to talk to people, they think it's just the president and it's not. Yeah. No, really no, true. We need to vote for people at every level. That means we need to right. vote for the president. We need to vote for the governor and the mayor, but not just right. the chief executive. That means city council at the local right. level. That means we got to vote for uh, the state legislators, state representatives, and state senators, Congress, right. member, co members of Congress, and members of the United States Senate, and also all these other offices like the state attorney general, the auditor general, the treasurer. We need to vote for them this right. year. And next year, we're going to have the district attorney's election up. Uh, the, the judicial elections. People always talk, people complain about why don't these judges, why don't these prosecutors respect our rights? Well, we got to vote in those processes and elect them. So you're right. Every six months there's an election, whether it's a, pri a primary in the spring and a general in the fall. We got to vote in every last one of them because every one of them jobs does something that affects us. Senator, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of commotion right now about and concern. Uh, about the COVID-19 and the impact it's going to have on the election. And in particular, people are concerned. I know I recently this morning went out and mailed my mail-in vote because I wanted to make sure it got in in time. Um, do you have any concerns over um, every vote counting and making every vote count here in Pennsylvania? And what steps are you aware of that are being taken to make sure that that happens? Well, certainly um, I'm, I'm extremely concerned about every vote counting. Uh, the Repub uh, Donald Trump went to court to try and suppress uh, votes, particularly those of black and brown people. Um, I, I countered him and was one of many people, but uh, he was the lead plaintiff with the Republicans. I was one of the lead plaintiffs with the Democrats that said he wanted to get rid of early voting centers. Um, we wanted to keep them. He wanted to get rid of drop boxes. We wanted to keep them. He wanted to allow people from out of the county to come in and, and, and under the guise of poll watchers and disrupt uh, elections and neighborhoods. We wanted people from only inside of communities, uh, inside of counties to be able to be poll watchers. Uh, look, um, and then he wanted ballots to be thrown out on a technicality around naked ballots. And we 
uh, wanted those votes to be counted. On every other issue other than the, the secrecy envelope, we won. Um, we will have early voting centers. So if, it's great if you want to mail your, uh, get receive your ballot in the mail and mail it back. But if you, should, for whatever reason, should want to uh, take it and drop it off yourself, you can. If you want to do like I did, which is just go to the early voting center, say, listen, I'm a registered voter. My name's Sharif Street. I'd like to receive a ballot. Get the ballot, fill it out, and cast it, paper ballot early. You can do that. Or if you want to go to on election day to vote in person, on a machine, you can do that uh, without being disrupted. Um, and so, or if you want to get it, get mail it, get the in mail and ballot and drop it in a drop box because you're concerned that the postal system may be delayed because of Trump's tactics, you can do that. So there are a number of ways you can vote. What we need to do, I, I just want this really important if I can, for 30 seconds, 10 seconds. You got, when you do the, the vote though, if you mail it, make sure there's an envelope that's a secrecy envelope. You put it in that small envelope first, you put right. that in bigger envelope and then you sign it. If you don't use that smaller envelope, your vote won't count. So you've got to pay attention to use that envelope. Yeah. So that's a really good point. So what I was going to ask you, I know that there's a, there's been an issue uh, on procedurally. I really sat down and followed, you know, got to put it inside. I got to seal it what the next steps were. So I just wanted to know, like if you were giving guidance to people right now um, that wanted to vote, the best way of doing it, it, first of all, is it too late to do a mail-in, a mail-in request your mail-in ballot? No, it's not. There are two different ways to request it. You can get an application and mail it in for mail-in ballot. It's not too late to do that. The other thing you can do is go to an early voting site and just walk in and say, I'd like a mail-in ballot. If you haven't already filled out an application for one, they can give you one on the spot. And you can either fill it out and vote it at that moment, or you can take it home, think about it, bring it back, or take it home, think about it, fill it out, and put it in the mailbox or a Dropbox. But it's definitely not too late. You can still request it by mailing in the request it, or you can just go to an early voting site, fill out an application, and get one on the spot. So I got to commend you. I was um, part of uh, this past weekend, this past Saturday, at the Leah Cora Center. Um, you ran an event that not only registered, but actually allowed people to vote. And uh, I would happen to be out of town, so I wasn't able to, to make it there. But I heard it was an incredible um, event. Thank you so much for, for getting the for taking steps like that. Um, you've always been that way where you've sought you um, where there's an issue that you need to tackle head on. Um, you do it right in the streets where we, we need to go to um, to get people out to vote. Um, just any final words um, you'd like to say about the upcoming election? I know the attorney general is going to be on today and I know he's definitely going to appreciate your comment of uh, he is on the ballot. <laughs> so right. uh, obviously you want to make sure people um, consider um, the attorney general um, in their voting. But is there any um, anything you want to say to the um, citizens of Philadelphia when it comes to our election that's coming up uh, that you feel is a, a must know? Like they need to understand this. Well, I agree. You definitely vote for the attorney general and vote for me. Um, so those are two. <laughs> but um, in all seriousness, I think we also need to understand that if we're going to be the country that we want to be, if we're going to make our tomorrows better than our yesterdays, um, we have to be engaged in the process. And people say to me all the time, Shreve, how can we make things better? How, what can we do? Is, is they're looking like there's a magic pull, pill or a light switch to flick and it changes. We have to be the change we want to see. Right. And the way we do that is by getting engaged in the process. No one is going, in a, in a democracy, no one saves the people from bad government except the people. We have the ability to change things. And the, the craziness, and I'll speak for myself, I know, this may not be the pain of the show, but in my opinion, the craziness we've seen in this country with a president who, who when people are chanting, the Jews will not replace us with swastikas and Ku Klux Klan hoods holding tiki torches, and they kill a woman who is standing up for what she believed to be civil rights. And the president says they're good people on both sides. That's a problem. When that same president says he was misunderstood, but in a debate, when he is asked to condemn white supremacy, he invokes the Proud Boys, who are many of the same folks who were in Charlottesville and killed that and killed Heather Heyer. That's a problem. When he won't condemn the murders of black and brown folks around the country, that's a problem. When he keeps children in cages, that's a problem. When he says that he wants religious tests like banning Muslims, that's 
that's a problem. When he says that he doesn't respect a woman, he don't, he won't, he will not appoint any judges that respect a woman's right to choose. That's a problem. When he has a vice pre picks a vice president who says he supports conversion therapy, and if you don't know what that is, strapping LGBT people into a into a chair and electric shocking them until they deny who they are, that is a problem. Mm -hmm. When a man can't condemn racism, he can't condemn sexism, he won't condemn homophobia, he won't condemn Islamophobia, he won't condemn anti-Semitism. In fact, he stirs the flames of that. And then on top of all of that, not respecting the environment, but then we know that he actively lied about knowing about a pandemic and a disease that he has, and he's receiving the best treatment. I'm glad that he is, but he denied that kind of treatment for other Americans because he wouldn't prepare. If this does not motivate us to vote, and this doesn't, and these times, I don't know what could. It is time for us to be engaged. It is time for us to vote. And we must send a clear, resounding message that this is not the country we want to be. We can be the best we want to be. But we have to vote and we have to remove Donald Trump from office. Right. Senator Street, we can't thank you enough for coming uh, on the show today. We appreciate you, all the hard work you're doing up in Harrisburg and here in Philadelphia. And um, again, thank you so much for coming on the show. We look forward to following up with you after the show and in the coming months. So we're going to take a short break and we're going to. One more thing, Jeff. Yep. I just wanted to say, uh, Senator Street, I appreciate you too. Uh, can we get a go, Eagles? <laughs> yeah. I know that was coming. I knew that was coming. I knew it was coming. We're going to take a short break. We're going to be playing some music for you today from Maxie Mandel. Maxie's going to be our next guest on the air. And Maxie's got this incredible story and amazing talent. So we're going to take a break and we're going to listen to Rise from Maxie Mandel. And we'll be right back at Philicam 103.5 FM. They say, don't you worry about a thing, cause everything's gonna be alright, and darling, sweep those tears to the side. This is part of your life You've got nothing to hide I, I was trying to be a ray of sunshine But sometimes it's okay to slide We are back at nice. Looking Forward Philadelphia. I'm here with Nate Szilard and WPPM 106.5 FM at Philly Cam. And we're also being televised today on Verizon and on Comcast. We are on Facebook Live and we're excited to be here on our election edition show. I'm really excited about our next guest. And we also have a surprise right after that. But before uh, we get to the surprise, we're going to bring on our, our next guest is a young lady who is er comes from Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, and he's Maxie Mandel. Maxie, how are you? 
I'm great. How are you? <laughs> we are good. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm so glad to have you. So I don't get I don't get us. Uh, uh, starstruck very often. So I, I'm usually around some people that are big rock stars or whoever, and yeah, no big deal, no big deal. But I'm so glad to have you on the show today. Yes. Because I, um, I'm a huge fan and I was introduced to you through your mom not long ago. And um, she said, you got to listen to my daughter's got this song. And I was like, okay. So why don't you, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, about Maxi and um, first who you are, where you're from and what your passion is. Well, my name is Maxie Mandel. I'm from Bryn Mawr, PA, but I'm actually moving to Fishtown soon in about a week and a half, two weeks. Um, and I'm a singer songwriter. I make music, I write on the guitar, piano, and a lot of my songs I try to write about things that I care about. Um, and that's kind of the message that's conveyed through, hopefully conveyed through a lot of my music is how, um, how I'm trying to use my music for good, kind of. And then also going along with who I am is I really care about um, human rights, you know, social justice, criminal justice reform, um, all these things that help make the world a better place that are kind of under attack right now. And that's how I try to use my platform as well. Awesome. Good stuff. Yeah. So, Maxi, I know that, um, first of all, you're moving to Fishtown and you're going to be my neighbor. I'm all excited. <laughs> you're living about a block away. So we're really excited about um, having you come into the neighborhood. Uh, it's a great area. You're going to you're going to love it. But, uh, you know, the reason that I really wanted you on the show was in large part because, number one, you're um, in the millennial generation. Um, or Gen X, whatever, you're right on the border there. But in particular, I think that, um, you know, voting in the upcoming election has um, has meaning to um, different age groups. I know that for a lot of people that are um, that are senior, they have concerns. For a lot of people that are minorities, they have concerns. But I'm curious about the younger generation. You know, you talked about your passion and criminal justice. Um, from your lens, um, how important is this election, and and why is it uh, why is it important for people like yourself and younger people to get out and vote? Yeah, well, a lot of us are really frustrated. I've been talking to a lot of people because I'm 16, so I can't vote in this election. And a lot of my friends feel the same way where we're really frustrated that we can vote because, you know, if we could, it would probably have a much different result. Um, <laughs> probably. <Yes. laughs> I mean, some people have been joking about how there's this app called TikTok and the most popular influencer on there. Everyone's been joking about, you should just have her, Charlie D'Amelio, do an Instagram poll and you would know the election would be over. And that's really how much power our generation has. And again, I think a lot of us are feeling really frustrated that we can't go out and, and um, voice ourselves like that. But that being said, we can still um try and encourage as many people who can vote as possible to use their voices. Right. So that's what yeah. I've been doing and that's what I that's what some of my friends have been doing. And that's what's really important is to do as much as we can without actually having a say. We can make sure everybody who wants to have a say has right. so, so Jeff, yeah okay, Nate. I, yeah because I have to step in with this one. You're you're 16? Yeah. So <laughs> I, I've so I, I I'm sorry to say that this is I've, I've, this is my first time meeting you and I, I've I've not heard of your music before but when Jeff told me about you or told me your name I I um YouTube'd you and you have like an extensive uh collection of of songs here and I listened to um uh, Unbroken and I'm saying <laughs> how do you come up with all of this <laughs> so where's your inspiration from right in general for most of my songs pretty much about just like things that have happened in my life. I kind of, um, I mean, obviously I haven't been through too, too much, but I had a pretty hard, I mean, I guess I would call it like a normal time in middle school and high school, but it was pretty hard because it's difficult to be a girl going through middle school, losing all your friends, all that stuff, all that right. drama. But those things, they inspired me um, because music was an outlet that I could turn to, um, to deal with it. So yeah, I wrote Unbroken when I was in probably the end of seventh grade. And that was kind of like in the middle of like fueling all of that. And yeah, so, and to this day, I still, I write about my experiences. I write about things that inspire me. And sometimes I even write about other people and how other people view the world. I don't know. A lot right. of things give me inspiration. Awesome. Really so, nice. 
Yeah, um, so sorry, two would... things. One is, you know, Maxi raises a point that I want to hit home on is that yeah. you know we have um six hundred and six hundred and thirty thousand plus people return from prison every year, and over between seventy and a hundred million people have a criminal record in the United States. Now, imagine the force. Imagine the voting force and the voice that could be heard if those men and women in mass went out and just put their vote in and just yeah. went to the polls. Um, it's the same thing with uh, the younger generations having that ability to vote. We have the ability to vote. If you're a returning citizen or somebody that's got a criminal past um, in Pennsylvania in particular, you're able to go out and cast your vote. So it's really important for you to do that. Maxie, the, the reason I wanted you on the show was because of another reason. And it was because you had told me about a song that you had written. And I, I want to, um, I'll give the studio a heads up to, to cue it up. But there's a song you written, you wrote. And um, why don't you tell us about it and, and what generated the, the um, what, what the impetus was, how it got started? Yeah, so I think you're talking about the reckoning here. I am. Um, so I wrote this song late May after I came home from the George, the protest for George Floyd in Philadelphia. I think it was one of the first ones. It was the big scary one when all the, the cop cars came and um, some of the riots started. But I was really, really inspired by the amount of people that were there, even though, you know, COVID was happening, even though there were so many reasons to stay home, there were thousands of people there and they were primarily um, among the younger generations. And that really inspired me because it was like, you know, who is the change? Like we are the change yes. and we are actively mm -hmm. changing. Even if some of us can't vote yet, we're still doing what we can to, to make our voices heard. And um, I think, you know, I think, it was really important because, you know, not enough social justice was achieved, but some was at least. And that was largely due in part to protesting. People say that protesting doesn't do anything, but I, I think it achieves a lot. So I wrote The Reckoning because I wanted to kind of sum up the feeling of how our generation is like a force to be reckoned with. Kind of. There you go. Yeah. So really cool. let's, let's hear a little bit of The Reckoning. Okay. By Maxie Mandel. of people line the streets, fists raised in solidarity. Amid the chaos, rage and lies, hope ignites here in prosperity. While all is uncertain, the one thing we know is we won't go Hey, we are back looking forward Philadelphia Maxi what an awesome song we yes. are so glad um, to have you on and um, what an impactful song too. Thank you. very impactful 
Yeah, wow. Great so, voice as well. um, we wish you luck getting your song out there. We're certainly going to blast it out wherever we can. And we really want people to listen to the words because it's the words that are the magic. But your voice is magical on top of that. So, Maxie thank Mandel, you. thank you so much for being on. Thank you, Maxie. Be found on Spotify. And um, if you Google Maxie Mandel and The Reckoning, um, you'll pick up her song and Rise and all of her other work, especially even on YouTube. So, Maxie, thank you so much. Um, we are um, we are going to not take a break right now, but we're actually going to bring a special guest on right now, which um, I I wasn't sure he was going to be on, but I want to introduce you to uh, Seth Williams. Seth, how are you? Outstanding. How are you, Jeff? How are you, Nate? How are you, Seth? Outstanding. I'm very fortunate Great. to be on here. I was just enjoying listening to Maxie. I could have kept yeah, listening yeah. to her all day. I wanted to tell yeah. I'm a fan now. <laughs> right, right, right. right. So um, for those of uh, Philadelphians that um, have been living in a tunnel somewhere the last 10 years of their lives, plus um, Seth Williams used to be district attorney here in Philadelphia and was an attorney here, um, made some choices like um, Nate and myself and right. ended up um, serving some time in prison, um, came home not too long ago. Um, so first of all, welcome home. Thank you very much, Jeff. I appreciate it. Yeah. How's it God, going? God is good. I'm very fortunate. Um, I've just enjoyed the little things. I, I think I took too many things for granted in my previous life. And uh, this was a wonderful opportunity. I refer to it as my sabbatical. And I had a, a wonderful opportunity. I lost a lot of things, right? I lost my reputation, my elected office. I lost my pensions, my house, uh, all the money I had, my liberty. Um, but I think in many ways I gained much more than um, I lost. And it was a wonderful opportunity really for some self-introspection, uh, um, and to really think about what's important in life and what's not important in life. And so, you know, I'm very glad to be home spending time with my daughters and uh, I'm glad to be here with you. Awesome. So we know you're not on the ballot this time, <laughs> so you can relax. There's yes. no, camp no campaign going on right now, but we are. Um, so I'm just curious about a few things. One, one first of all, um, when we're away, you don't get to vote. So I'm curious, um, you know, did you miss it? Did you miss, do you miss politics? Do you miss that, that atmosphere um, of um, making change happen in some respect? Well, I, you know, my, my father used to tell me every night that unless you're willing to be a part of the solution, you forfeit your right to complain. So I grew up always wanting to be involved and wanting to try to help. I thought elected politics was a, a good way to do that. Um, in many ways, being involved with elective politics and having to try to promote yourself all day, every day, was part of my demise. Um, but I, I, I really enjoyed the opportunity to serve Philadelphia and to, uh, you know, I made some bad decisions, as you explained. I'm very apologetic for that. I deeply regret having let so many people down. Um, to those I wronged, I ask, you know, for your forgiveness. I wish I could have done more. I know we, I'm very proud of things I did as the district attorney. I wish I could have helped more people. But you're right, I missed voting. Um, and I missed um, trying to work with people like your earlier guest, Sharif Street, who I knew and I worked with his father. His father appointed me inspector general. I worked with a uh, guest you might have later, our attorney general, Josh Shapiro. We worked on the Obama campaign in 2008. We worked together at a law firm, Stradley Ronan. So I, wor I missed working with people at the community level, at civic associations. And I thought that I had lost my ability to vote forever. And I was really sad about that because my parents would take me you know, twice a year with them into the polls to vote behind that curtain. And I continued that tradition with my daughters, taking them every year, twice a year to vote with me to show them how fundamental and important that was. Um, and I got home, I thought I couldn't vote. And just about two weeks ago, I learned that, you know, there's 300,000 approximately Philadelphians with criminal records, but we can vote. The laws right. changed in 2010. If you are in jail awaiting trial, you can vote by absentee ballot. If you are in jail on a misdemeanor, you can vote by absentee ballot. The only people who can't vote in Pennsylvania are if you are currently incarcerated for a felony or you were convicted of voter fraud and are within four years of that conviction. Other than that, everyone can vote. So I got off home confinement, Jeff and Nate, last Wednesday, Yay. Uh, September the 30th. <laughs> very first thing I did, very first day that I cut off the ankle monitor, I went down to City Hall and I registered to vote. 
Great. Wow. So I urge everyone, you can go to votespa.com, philadelphiavotes.com, uh, the hairstonfoundation.org, and you can learn all the rules about how to register, how you can vote. But I really urge as a, as a returning citizen, as an ex-offender, um, we can vote. Right. And I was surprised to know that. And I want everyone to share with others just the very fundamental right that we have. You know, so many people died for the right to vote right? Um, and were denied the right to vote. And this is something that we can't take lightly. I won't get into partisan politics right now, but I think no matter what you think, what's important to you, very important, climate, criminal justice reform, educational equity, public safety, uh, national safety, whatever your concern is, go and vote. Yeah, for too long, people thought people have this had this mindset that you know I'm just one of millions that are getting voted, and really doesn't doesn't not going to have an impact, not going to change much. But I really think we're starting to see that change and that, that mindset change that every vote does count, Correct. and that you know if you really want to walk the walk, then you have to go out and you got to cast that ballot. You can't sit in your at home behind your television and and complain uh, because you now have an opportunity to really make make it happen to make things right. happen so, so Seth, what would you um what would you say that the biggest challenge has been just off this point for a minute um coming home um well you know i was a prosecutor i was a criminal defense attorney i thought i knew all types of stuff but um until you go through it most of the issues and the questions i fears that i had were things that my attorneys couldn't answer for me things that i didn't know um but as coming home the biggest challenges that I've had are the same challenges that other returning citizens have of housing and employment. Where am I gonna live? Who's gonna hire me? Um, and trying to put those things together while trying to rebuild your life and relationships that may have been damaged. You know, It's like trying to uh, change the transmission on a Lamborghini as you're driving down 95. So there's a whole lot going on. You've got to do everything. Um, and so I'm very thankful that I did have the opportunity to grow spiritually and, and emotionally while I was away. Um, and I just want to continue to live in a healthy way that way. Now, a, a life of authenticity. So you mentioned the uh, the Hairston Foundation. Can you yeah. tell us about the work you're doing with them in relation to getting out the vote? Sure. So the Harrison Foundation was created really to address the fact that just poverty in Philadelphia um, and are trying to help do as much as possible to employ ex-offenders. Um, and so uh, the executive director is Roosevelt Harrison. He created it. And he said, you know, Seth, can you help me do something to educate people about the right to vote, specifically ex-offenders? And I said, sure. So I started doing research and that's when I found out that I could vote. I didn't know that we could vote. I mean, many states, you know, in Florida and other places, returning citizens have lost their right to vote or no longer able to exercise that right. And so I'm primarily trying to help right now, just educate everyone to share with other people that the 300,000 Philadelphians uh, with criminal records can still vote. Um, and it's easy to vote, learn to register vote online. You can vote, you know, um, it's very easy. And so my main thing right now is just to educate the other returning citizens like myself, that we have not lost that right. And that, you know, as slim as the margin of victory was in 2016 um, for President Trump in Pennsylvania, you said earlier that, you know, we used to think that, well, one vote doesn't count. Every vote counts. And, you know, for all the guys I sat around with uh, in prison for almost three years, everybody had an opinion, okay? <laughs> everybody wanted to be heard. And I just, uh, you know, if that shoe fits, please, now's your opportunity. Register and vote. The attorney general, as you said, is on the ballot. Um, Josh Shapiro is a great person. But more importantly, the attorney general in Pennsylvania doesn't affect just criminal justice. The majority of responsibilities are related to our environment, are related to fighting for educational opportunity um, in Pennsylvania, doing all types of things that people don't even know. So I would educate you, just go online and read it. Um, but more importantly, please register to vote. Again, you can go to votespa.com, philadelphiavotes.com, 
the Harrison Foundation dot org. Or you can be like me. Just walk down to City Hall. The right. Board of Elections is open on the first floor. Just go in. People are there to help you. The city also has opened, I think, close to 10 neighborhood voter registration and education centers where you can go and register to vote. And in some cases, register to vote and vote all in the same day. Um, it's painless. It's very easy. Um, you can do it online. If you're old school like me and you want paper and a pen, you can go down there and you can register to vote on a clipboard, right? So it fits everyone. I just say, look, no matter what your perspective is, your political bent, what your passions are, please just go and vote. You know, there's a statue I, I mentioned when I came out of City Hall registering, a statue of Octavius Cato. And uh, he died on election day in 1871 trying to protect the right of African Americans to vote. So in honor of him, in honor of our ancestors, please register to vote and exercise that right on November the 3rd. Absolutely. Um, Jeff, yeah, I, was, I just wanted to say that, and it, that's, that's one of the most important things because I think that first to, to, to um, make the, uh, allow people that have the ex-offenders to know, because a lot of ex-offenders think that because of what they're, um, crime was that they can't vote. They're not. They're, not, they're not sure of the Correct. the distinction between right who can and who can't, and that's exactly. part of the problem with the ex offender situation. Right. And the good thing with the Harrison Foundation is that a lot of education on voting isn't given and, and isn't known. And I right. think that's important to know too, because once you know that we don't think our vote counts, like I was saying earlier, is because we think we only voting for the president or right. people in higher offices as opposed to voting for senates and congress people as well. And the, the smaller, all down the line. And I think that that counts. I mean, we know that it counts, but a lot of people don't think that our vote counts because they think that only the president makes the decisions and it's, it's coming from right. congress and state senate as well. Right. So. right. And Senator Street said earlier, right. we have to be the change we want. We right. have to make those changes. And you know, Nate, you're 100% right. I thought, and many people think, well, I'm an ex-offender, I can't vote, or only these specific people with specific convictions, only they can vote. If you, right. are, It doesn't matter what you were convicted of. As long as you weren't convicted within the last four years of voter fraud, right. you can vote. You know? Yeah, one of the, one of the things is, is, is also about the, the impact of the vote. Now, it's not just who you you get into office, but what actually happens with it. I know he's I just got a text that he's going to hopefully be on shortly. Um, the attorney general um, about two years ago started the Pennsylvania Reentry Council, okay. which represents returning citizens from across the Commonwealth um, and provides support services, um, really um, helps create policy that yes. provides support services for men and women coming up, uh, coming home from prison and those navigating reentry. Mm -hmm. um, I chair the employment committee on that and have um you know since it started and quite honestly you know this is where change happens i'll give you right. one example and he's not on so it's not not like brown nose in here but um you know one of the things that happened as a result of the committee that i was on was we made a really big push for occupational licensing change in pennsylvania it didn't make sense to me that a barber could not renew his license when he came out of prison simply because he had done some time. Right. It just didn't make sense. And there's these occupational restrictions, over 120 of them in, Phil in Pennsylvania, which prohibited men and women with backgrounds to actually get in the game, to do the profession that they loved. And one of the things that happened within the last uh, the last four months was that the governor signed a bill that said, we're going to take a look at it again. And now um, they have until January to actually all the licensing bureaus in Pennsylvania to relook at their statue and to come back with a way to level the playing field to say, OK, we're not going to blanketly exclude anyone that's getting that, that has a criminal record from getting this licensure. Um, but we're going to do is we're going to look at the whole person. We're going to look at their what they did, what they've done since, the lessons that they've learned, and then the, we're going to open the door back up. And that happened in large part because of the people we put into office. Correct. It happened because of the voices that we have in Harrisburg that are helping us make that change happen. People like Sharif Street and Jordan Harris and um, locally um, politicians that are that are going to bat for us and recognizing the need for more reentry support. So I know that um, Nate and I both work with a program called Looking Forward Philadelphia, which is um, in partnership with Temple University and the Lenfest Foundation. And this is a, a grassroots 
we we take you where you are and then we try to find you um the supports that you need and it's not about getting a job it's about finding a career opportunity that that moves you forward that gives you a pathway to be successful and that's often the challenge for men and women coming home is you know just throwing you into a fast food restaurant is not the solution the solution is giving you a skill set so that you can eventually earn that 401k and you get the retirement benefits and the vacation and the family and you get all those things that go along with stable employment. And that really is what it becomes all about. So looking forward, Philadelphia, and I'm, I'll give it a shameless plug. Um, <laughs> go for it. Go for it. it. Early on and we are all virtual, um, but we do meet people um uh, when we need to at 15, 20, 60, so be more. But to reach looking forward, you can reach out to 484 533 7002. That's 484 533 7002. And that's how you can connect with us. And again, the workshops are virtual. Um, we have done more career placement over the last few months than ever before. And in large part, because uh, men and women, they need to work. They need to be out there and getting, and the opportunities definitely are there. Um, the doors are starting to open up wider. Um, things are starting to really happen um, for returning citizens. And we've made so much progress over the last few years. It's right. silly for us not to uh, take advantage of it. And Jeff, let me help. touch on that for a second. I just wanted to say that one thing about the Looking Forward program is that what we do realize is that life happens after five o'clock. We work okay. nine to five, but situations take place after five. Okay. So we make ourselves available for those of our, our participants after five to help them out with what they need. Thanks, Nate. I also want to mention something, and maybe um, Seth, you might be able to chime in a little bit on this, is sure. that, you know, we have COVID-19. That's been our our reality, you know, within the last uh, months. And, and we really are. Uh, and in Philadelphia, I uh, have been really good, pretty mindful. I mean, I walk and work in Center City and I'm, I'm walking the streets and and it's, it's a rare occasion that I see people without masks on. Mm -hmm. um, and I want you to set I want you to understand that it's not about taking away a freedom or anything like that from my end. It's it's really doing something sensible by protecting yourself. <laughs> Uh, but more importantly, protecting other people. Um, you may or may not have have um, COVID-19 and, and you may have it and never you know it and yet be passing it on to people. So it just makes good common sense for us to do. It. And I've been proud of Philadelphians for stepping up. But on Election Day, it becomes even more important. Yeah. On Election Day, it's going to be important for us to look at, you know, how is it? How is it that we can be safe going voting? Mm -hmm. And and that's going to be um, some real patience. Um it, it's really being patient along the way, understanding there's going to be some lines and you know, you're know you going to need to social distance and you're going to need to do some things that protect you um, all, you know, going through. So I want everybody to be mindful uh, of all the safety precautions going out to vote, but that shouldn't preclude you from doing so. Yeah, it's Jeff. more important than ever to get out and, um, and, and share your vote. Yeah. And, um, and Jeff, I can't, I can't reiterate that. I can't um, you know, repeat that enough. But because of COVID-19 and all the steps that here in Philadelphia, the city commissioners are making, like I said, you can request a mail-in ballot. You can actually go and you can vote early or you can go on election day, whichever way is most, you know, whatever you think is going to help you remain safe. My daughters, God bless them, are COVID conscious. Okay. Great. They remind me to clean the mask, wear the mask, do everything clean, take off the clothes, wash the clothes, take a shower as soon as I get home, everything you can imagine. But it's very important. So we have, our, we have our next guest on. Sorry to interrupt, Seth. No worries. I see Josh. Hopping on. We appreciate you, and we look forward to catching up and following your journey. Um, right, take care. Attorney General Josh Sorry, Shapiro Jeff. is on with us today. Attorney General, how are you? And thank hey. you so much for coming on. Good to be with you. Good to be with how, you. How, how are you? So I have to tell you that first of all, I have um, I gave a little uh, story before you came on about um, the creation of the Pennsylvania Reentry Council and the yep. amazing work um, and the privilege I've had to sit on that council and chair the employment committee um, under the guidance of yourself and Rob Reed and wonderful Charla and other people in your department, your agency. I can't say enough, but we are really making change happen as the Jeb's motto goes. And we've been excited um, about the work that's happening. Thank you so much for coming on. There are some things I really, we don't have a lot of time today, but some things I really want to hit on. The theme today is all about election. And I, I woke up uh, last week 
and saw you on one of the uh, major broadcasts, a national broadcast, uh, talking about um, the challenges in Pennsylvania and um, your battles that you're fighting for us. And I yeah. think the people of Pennsylvania need to know what you're doing when it comes to the elections. Yeah, look, first off, um, I don't want folks to get bogged down in the legalese. I want them to make a plan to vote, whether they vote safely from home uh, before Election Day through the mail or whether they show up on uh, November 3rd and vote in person. I'm battling it out in court. And what you need to know is that we have a sitting president of the United States who is literally suing us in Pennsylvania to make it harder for people to vote. Literally, that's what we're dealing with. We're battling it out in both federal and state court. Uh, some of his Republican enablers have even asked the United States Supreme Court to weigh in. They're trying to eliminate drop boxes and create a situation where many ballots could be thrown out even before they're counted. One of the things that I find most dangerous is that they're trying to upend state law to allow poll watchers to come from any county in Pennsylvania. And that may kind of sound somewhat innocuous to you, but let me be very clear, Jeff, what that's all about. That's about bringing people into black and brown communities, predominantly in Philadelphia and Allentown and Pittsburgh uh, and Hazleton and communities like that, and intimidating certain voters when they show up at the polls. Voter intimidation is illegal because it undermines our democracy and, and you know the people's participation in it. And I'm not gonna stand for it. So we plan to spend the better part of these next roughly 30 days uh, battling it out in court to make sure we secure and protect every single vote. And then starting at 8.01 p.m. on election day, ensuring that every single vote is counted, whether you showed up and voted in person or whether you showed up and voted through the mail. So what would you say to Philadelphians and Pennsylvanians that are, um, they're, they're kind of on the fence. I mean, we, yeah. we're battling COVID-19 right now. We wanna be safe. Um, wear your mask when you get out to vote. Um, make sure you social distance and there may be some lines but um, can you assure people that, you know, they're going through the effort that um, that their vote's going to count and that it's meaningful and they shouldn't just sit home and think that everybody else is going to do their job for them? We learned in 2016 that no one else is going to do the job for you. You've got to do it for yourself. And so my message to not just Philadelphians, but all Pennsylvanians is right now, today, make your plan to vote. And you've got a lot of different options. Let me quickly walk through them. You can apply for a mail-in ballot and either return it through the mail or drop it off at a drop box. And there's many of them across Philadelphia. You can go on the uh, city commissioner's website and find that. You can also, if you don't wanna deal with the mail, you can show up at an early voting center, one of these satellite voting offices as they've been referred to. You can vote there, those are open now. Or you can make a plan to vote in person on November 3rd. Wear your mask, keep your distance from other voters, uh, cast your vote. Here's the deal. They're all going to be counted. I don't want any voters out there worried. Uh, I, you know, let, let me and my great team focus on protecting the vote in court against the attacks from Donald Trump. And you just simply make your plan today to vote no matter how you, uh, how you plan to do it. So we can give you a shameless plug. Uh, because I did, I did get to vote. I'll um, take it. I took my ballot over this morning and and did was proud to um to fill in the circle next to your name. And um, Thank you know, you. there are a lot of people that are um that you know have to understand the work that you've been doing so hard. Um, there have been so many events that you and I have been to over the course of the year. And the one thing that always inspires me is that you have an attorney general that's so reachable. And I can't tell you and thank you for the people that I work with, the men and women that have gone through the criminal justice system, have some justice involvement, where you've really sat down and explained things and said, we need to make this better. And, um, and so we thank you so much for all of that. Um, there's Nate with his pen. <laughs> I truly, there you go. I love seeing that ballot and the first place Eagles sign behind you. But um, look, I, I'll just say, I, I, I appreciate you, Jeff. And, and one of the things that I hope when this election's over, I can come back and we could talk about my passion for helping returning citizens and, and the work that we're doing uh, to make sure that our recidivism rate, which currently stands at 66%, that means 66% of all people who leave jail go back We've got to reverse that. And one of the best ways we do that is by putting people to work, um, giving them a stake in our democracy, in our community. And I really, truly appreciate the work you're doing 
with the Office of Attorney General to help us with that initiative. Appreciate you, appreciate Jeb's, and and so many others. So thank you very, very much. Attorney General, thank you so much for taking some time with us today. Good luck in the election. We're counting on it. And um, Nathan, thank you for being my co-host today. It's been wonderful. It's been an exciting journey with you, as it always is. And we're here at Looking right. Forward Philadelphia. It's WPPM 106.5 FM. And uh, we're going to be signing out. But thank you so much, Attorney General, and to all of our wonderful guests. Also, a shout out back at the studio for some great people that have helped us. Allison Durham, uh, Sergio and Roland working the board today. Nate has always been um, a wonderful co-host, chiming in with the Eagles banner, as always. And um, <laughs> this is Looking Forward Philadelphia. We're grateful to be here. And thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Everybody have a good one.